So what are density-driven flows? Well, there are flows that are initiated by lateral density differences. So lateral means horizontal. The density is different if you look at two locations, different locations horizontally. Okay, so what is density? Well, density is the weight of seawater per unit volume. Okay, density is the weight of water. You know, and you use a unit of volume to compare different water masses. And here's one example. I'll show you one example. You just have some ambient fluid. And that's sort of your reference fluid. And next to, is, next to it is heavier water. Okay, so how do you create heavier water? Or oh, you probably know that in terms of seawater, well, you increase the salinity that makes it heavier. Or you decrease the temperature. And that's... That's how you do it. Okay. In a lab, you can indeed just use a freshwater solution next to a saline solution. Okay. So, in fact, it is to do with the density differences, but it's actually the pressure gradient force, or the horizontal pressure gradient force, that creates these flows or that drives these flows. It's a force, and forces lead to an acceleration. Okay? So now, next question, what is pressure? Well, pressure is actually proportional to the weight of the water column above a location. Okay, so you're anywhere here within this fluid tank, okay? and now the pressure that you have relates to the weight of water above you. Okay. And a horizontal pressure gradient is, if you now compare pressure horizontally along a line, is if it changes along this line. This is a horizontal gradient. Gradient means a change or a contrast or a difference. So let's go into more detail with this scenario. I just click on that. This is how the horizontal pressure gradient looks like in this case. So why is this? So let me try to switch on the mouse. It's here. So let's just go into the ambient fluid. Okay, we start near the surface. And as you move down, what? The pressure increases because you have more and more weight above you. Okay, that's, that's, that's almost trivial, isn't it? More and more weight the pressure gets bigger and bigger. On the right-hand side, we just click, get the mouse on the, on the right side, it's the same, but the pressure increase is stronger because you have heavier fluid. So wherever you are, horizontally, there is a pressure gradient from right to left, and this difference in the weight difference between both sides increases as you move towards the bottom of your tank. So the pressure gradient increases as you move towards the bottom. This is a horizontal force that will accelerate the fluid. Okay? So now let's just have a look at what happens in a tank. So we go to the next slide. On the left-hand side, you can see the setting. But to make it a little bit clearer, we also included side walls. So we really have a tank with side walls. Okay, and that, that, that plays some role in the, in the explanation. Okay? Because as expected, what will happen is that near the bottom of the tank, the fluid, because of the horizontal pressure gradient, force is moved along the bottom from right to left. But there is also a return flow near the surface from left to right. What drives this return flow? And this return flow is also driven by uh, a pressure gradient. But this pressure gradient is initiated or comes from the slope of the sea level. The slope of the sea level is created by water moving from right to left. 
pushing water against the horizontal wall and upward. Okay, you get an increase in the sea level and the removal on the right hand side leads to a drop. This is a surface slope of the sea surface. We call that a barotropic pressure gradient that drives the return flow and the baroclinic pressure gradient associated with the, with the horizontal density gradients uh, creates the, the density driven flow. So in, in fluids, we always have these two components. And if water moves away from a region, there is a return flow. Okay? On the very large scale of the thermohaline circulation of the oceans, okay, that's, that we call it an overturning circulation. Okay, so this is sort of the basics. Okay, this is the starting point. Ignoring the Coriolis force. Ignoring the Coriolis force, the Coriolis force comes, comes into play if a process lasts longer than a, than a, a day. And also if frictional effects can also influence the process. Anyway, not, not too much detail. Just have a look how the, how the tank setting looks like of your experience.